Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we will be going down into this app I built, just kind of like a test app to have a little sneak peek at some things I've been working on. Uh, I want to showcase a component used for, as you can see on the right here, this uh, bottom view where we have the button placed. I want to show you how I implemented this, this reusable component. Um, very often you will see in apps having this uh, floating view at the bottom. So you can always, no matter how far you scroll on the page, always access this action and yeah, move on to the next screen or pop up in modal or whatever it may be. And in addition, in addition to showing that um, fixed bottom component here, uh, I want to show you guys my React Navigation version 5 uh, config. Just show you a little more intermediate example than the one they show in the docs. In case you're not familiar um, with the newest version of React Navigation, I would suggest going to their website to have a look. Just spend five minutes reading the the blog post here. It will uh, explain what's new and uh, also give some examples and uh, introduce the new hooks, which are very useful if you're doing any type of modern React programming. Okay, so yeah, let's go back to the, the code here. So currently I have listing.js open and that is basically the screen we see on the right here where we have a listing and with a title, descriptions and some items available for swap. But uh, the one I want to focus on is this button at the bottom of the screen. So the component here is this fixed bottom component and all I pass is some children. In this case, it's a button component and I don't do any styling to this button. I just pass it in and um, the idea is that every time I pass a button in here or view or whatever it may be, this fixed bottom will make sure that this appropriate styling is applied. So it's always in the same spot with the same look. Okay. So how did I implement this? So let's uh, open up the navigator over here or the explorer and then open up the fix button component here. So it's actually a really simple implementation, but also very neat. So the props I'm taking in here is children. I'm destructuring this one out. I have a wrapping view here where I apply the uh, container styles defined down here. And it's pretty simple, so I put the position to absolute and I put 10 by the bottom here just to create a little bit of gap and then left and right zero, add a little bit of padding and then at the end put the height to 80. Okay, so that's the container styles and then I also have some button styles here that make sure that the button I pass in the children will take the height and also be centered. So up here in my markup, I check whether children is set. And if I do, I call the react.clone element. And uh, if you're a new React developer or React Native developer, you probably haven't used this one yet. Uh, this one is being used a lot under the hood, but not usually a function you call yourself. But in this case, it's pretty useful. So what we can pass in here is a uh, our react node so in this case is our children the one we pass as props here and then we can pass any kind of props as the second argument in this case I'm always passing style and the styles dot button here so every time I pass something inside a button in here it will have the styling and since I'm using this button which is from react native paper it has some built-in styling so my buttons are always the same no matter 
where I go. So let's say I press this swap here. I jump onto this page. I have another button here with the exact same styling. And that's because I'm using this same type of button. And then I'm just inheriting this extra styling. So say you use different buttons in different places, then you probably want to add a little bit more styling here. But for my use case, this will suffice. Okay. So um, on this screen, I'm using the same component, as you can see, and the button is uh, the exact same. So if I go to my Explorer here and open up listing swap, which is the second screen. So this screen here, you can see I'm doing the same thing here using my fixed button component and then passing in button with the send request text here. Okay. Now that was the first component I want to show you. Now I want to uh, show my React Navigation version 5 configuration. So I'm going to open up the index.js in the router folder here and then close these files. And then let's have a quick look in here. So in the new version 5, whenever we want navigation our project, we want to pull in navigation container from react navigation slash native. And this is a new package with version 5. And the next package we want to pull in is create stack navigator from react navigation slash stack. And um, this one needs to be called like this initially. And then you can start uh, using the JSX uh, syntax down here as I'm doing. So just a quick uh, explanation why React Navigation version 5 is so cool. And that is because we can put everything in they put everything as JSX like this, and that means we can perform perform some changes uh, in regards to to state. Uh, so if we have let's say we have a global state in our project, let's say this uh, navigation container is wrapped in a theme, then if anything is changed in the theme, we can go in here and then adjust the styling, for example just to add some logic into this navigation function and then apply it down here. It's uh, pretty cool. Before it was static and now you can do whatever you want, which is awesome. Okay, so a quick explanation of the code here. So the first screen, the first one here is the screen over here. So it's very simple. I put in a name you always need to put in a name so in case you go on to navigate this is the name you put in so this is listing i add in the component here as a prop which is the listing screen and then new thing here so i'm adding some options in. i don't want the header up top i don't want some blank space here because as you can see here i have an image uh, in this design so I want to make sure I get rid of that. So as header, I pass in an empty uh, function here that returns null, nothing. Okay, this is pretty basic. Now, if I press let swap, I'm jumping onto the next screen and this one is a little more complicated. So instead of just returning in an object here in the options, I'm actually returning a function. So you can both input an object, an object, a configuration object, or even a function. So here I'm, I am putting in a function and I'm destructuring route here. And the reason for that is um, I want to have a look at the parameters that I pass when I navigate to this listing swap screen. So if I open up listing, you can see that when I my onPress function here. So I'm calling navigation.navigate the name of the uh, screen, which is listing swap. And then I'm passing in a object here with the property name with, and then I'm passing in the user image. So this is the user image of the person I'm attempting to perform a swap with. So 
that is the one that I'm accessing here in route.params.width. And then just to make sure nothing crashes, I'm doing this ampersand to check if route is there, and then I'm checking if there's any parameters, and then I'm checking, and then I'm outputting route.params.width. And uh, I actually don't think this is needed because there's always a route up here and the params, but this is just, um, yeah, some safety checks to make sure the program doesn't crash. But in this case, um, it's actually okay to delete it. It's just like a nice habit whenever you're de dealing with nested stuff and you're not sure if it exists or not. Okay, so that was a little bit uh, off topic. Let's jump back into the return here. So I'm returning an object, right? And since uh, with React Navigation, we get some basic styling that I don't really like. So I need to make sure that these three are present. Otherwise we get a big, oh, it's not big and fat, but there's like a line here. Uh, and unless, if you don't set these three properties, we will be able to see it. And I don't want that line because I want this background color uh, of the top part of the navigation here to match with this view that I have down here where it says straight. So I need to apply the styling and then I remove the title. So header title, I pass zero and on the header right, this is where I'll put the image up here. And that's where I get my image URL. Okay, that's the one I'll put, I'll put here. And uh, yeah, that was um, my React Navigation version 5 config, or it's JSX now, so um, yeah. So if you are getting started with React Navigation version 5, I hope this small example uh, is useful to you, and um, hopefully also the fixed bottom component here is uh, useful to you if you are making some apps with uh, a similar, similar design. Okay, that's all I want to show you for now. If you like the video, give it a like. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Bye.